Hello and welcome to another Godot tutorial. After posting my tutorials on Reddit Godot, I'm pretty overwhelmed by the reactions of you guys and I gained about 20 subscribers. This is amazing for me and it means a lot to me. So I will continue of course on the tutorials and today I would like to show you my wind shader I have using in my last tutorial for the outline. So there was the question if I can show the wind shader and today I would like to do it and show you how my wind shader on low poly trees is working. I have to admit I am not a super pro at the shading language nor in writing shader in general so I google a lot myself to find out how it works but we will go step by step through the shader and I hope to show you some things. Of course I have a basic understanding of shaders in general and the shading language so I try to explain as much as I can and we go step by step through the shader and I uploaded the shader already to github so you can just download it in the description below and just check it out by yourself so it's uh, fully functional and working and you can play around with it but now let us go through the shader code and we go through it step by step so this is how the shader looks inside my game you see all the trees are wobbling here right now with the outline you can see it a bit better and yeah Every tree is uh, wobbling a bit different. This is what we try to achieve. We can of course uh, manipulate some settings. I will show you that in a minute. So let us go into the code. A shader always begins with the shader type we have to specify. In this, file, uh, in this case it's a spatial one. This means it's just for 3D rendering. So if you check out the go.shadingLanguage doc, you see shader types can be spatial for 3D rendering, canvas item for 2D rendering or particles for particle system. Also after that follows the render modes. These are optional and followed by the shader type. So we have a lot of uh, render modes here because we have the blend mix, we have a color disabled, we have a depth draw prepass and specular disabled. After that follows our variables. So we have here some uniform variables. These are global variables and uh, it's very important that every uniform which is set is always global for the shader. So in every mesh you use the shader you will have the same uniform variable. And uh, this is pretty important to, uh, to know because uh, if you manipulate some kind of shader, some kind of color, you will change it for every mesh who uses this shader. We can of course set a default value right here. So we have debug false and transparent true. Also which is pretty cool all these uh, uniforms are shown here in the shader param. So you can uh, afterwards set them over the inspector. And this is also pretty cool because if you hint the right uh, type of the variables you have like the color here. It's a sampler 2D albedo color. So we have afterwards a color picker over here and can set the right color. Also you can hint ranges. This means that uh, the wind range, for example must be between 0 and 5. So our default is 0 0.5 and it must be somewhere between 0 and 5. So you can see right here if I go to the wind range and I try to set it to 10 it will automatically clip it to 5. So a shader in general is split between the vertex shader and the fragment shader. In general the vertex shader is manipulating the position of our drawing. So if we go through that we always have the position in world coordinates. So we can manipulate the position there and the fragment shader is usually used to color our position where we are at. So let us go through the vertex shader. First we have the shader constant vertex which just gives it a vector free which is our position on the vertex right now on the mesh. Out of that we generate the world position. We use the world matrix which is also a shader constant we can use yeah, and multiply it with a vector 4 of vertex and 1. Um, we have to use a ver uh, vector 4 here because the world matrix is a vector 4. So we multiply them together and just use afterwards the x, y and z and put it to the vector 3 world pause. Also the vertex shader is quite good commented so we see we generate the world chords here. Then afterwards we generate a linear curve that slides along the vertices. This is done by the world position. We use a frac from that and we have the wind scale, the wind speed which is set it in our variables and we multiply them. Also time is another constant of the shader. Yeah, so we generate our offset which is uh, later 
the yeah the wobbling effect at all so we manipulate the positions of our mesh so afterwards it's looking like it's wobbled around yeah this is done here we have then the time we generate the noise in the world space we generate the mask for it so leaves on top further then we add the wind speed finally add everything to our vertex so we generate this wobbling effect yeah for the fragment shader we're actually doing coloring all our uvs so we use the uv constant to have our uv yeah so what's the fragment shader actually doing is we painting our fragments so we use our albedo color and texture them to the uv of course there's a lot of stuff going on here but in general speaking it's just we have to color our uv right and of course we have to do the alpha for transparent if we are moving the fragments in the vertex shader of course we don't color them here you can see it a little bit when the tree is wobbling around that sometimes if the leaves are going behind the meshes of course we ha then have the top right to color it with alpha transparent or we have to color even further so that we create this wobbly effect yeah as i said i uploaded the shader for you to github so please check it out in the description below please comment below if you want to see another tutorial about something in general and we will see us within the next tutorial bye